بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب ضدی علم ولیقنی بالصالحین فاطر سماوات ولا انت ولی فت دنیا مر آخرہ تب افنی مسلمان ولیقنی بالصالحین آر ٹاپک از کازز آف بیڈ اینڈ پور انگلش اور ان سینس پورنیس آف دی انگلش لینگویج انفارچونیٹلی آر انگلش از فار فرام پرفیکٹ مے بی اسپوکن written and reading. Reading has become a dying habit with the passage of time. Hardly a few people are interested and keenly interested in reading English. Now there are certain countries where English is the native language. For example, England, United Kingdom, mainly England, the capital or biggest part of United Kingdom, with capital London, then the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. These are the countries where English is the native language of the people. They don't have any problem with the English, maybe written, spoken, reading and so on. Now about the countries where English is as a medium of instructions, for example, Dubai, Fiji, Singapore, these are some of the countries, English is a medium of instruction, which is all books are in English. Also, there are countries where English is taught as a medium of instruction and also countries where it's as a main language, Hong Kong, where English is a main language. There are people speaking different languages, Chinese, Taiwan and so on, but English is the main language there. Also, there, is, there are countries where English is taught as a second language. Unfortunately, we don't have second language here, the third or the fourth language. However, It is taken as a second language because we have Urdu as national, then Sindhi as a provincial language, second language, English as a third language. But in schools we are taught as a second language, so-called second language, not really second language. Countries where English is taught as an additional or supporting language, for example, China, Japan, Romania and so on. These countries are very much proud of their languages. Don't, they don't rely on other languages. The main books, curriculum, means of teaching, idiom, everything is in their own languages. Chinese, Japanese, Romanian, and Japanese, and so on. But they have English very much. They believe that they can't do without English. It is the main language that is used in diplomatic languages, diplomatic relations, international relations, inter- international economics and relations. So they can't do without it, but they, they have their own language, with they, that language they pull on, there are all the mediums at the schools, colleges, and universities. Now, why English is main subject of our educational history level? The English people ruled us for more than 125 years. They not only ruled us, they planted the plant of the English language here. Also, some Muslims took great efforts. They made great efforts to plant the English language here. They believed that the Muslim people, especially in competition with the Hindus, couldn't pull on in the field of economics, politics, and social affairs without English. So they taught English to English people, people living there especially, women, children, and boys. Of them, Ali brothers took great part. He played a very important role, both brothers, especially Muhammad Ali Johar. He started a newspaper called Comrade. It was a very good newspaper, having only two or three pages or four pages, but a very good newspaper. So much so that even the English people liked that paper very much for their as a language. Unfortunately, we learn English as a subject for the time being. We are not very much concerned with language. Language is a vast subject. It's etymology, vocabulary, semantics, phonology, morphology, grammar, and so on. Here we learn English as a subject only for the time being. The summary, substance, central idea, some answers to questions, some exercise, that's all. And we go with this English for years together. And as a result, we don't have that mastery very much on the language as we ought to have. Now, as a subject, English is taught in poetry, prose, plays, and criticism. And that is up to the master's level in AMA English. Unfortunately, this subject is now no more in universities. They said there should be BS in English with some linguistics, some literature, 
and some language. So this is new new course that it's called BS in English. That Dr. Saab and that Dr. Saab have degrees. As the language is taught through linguistics now, it is modern English language and linguistics. We have in it lot of subjects. For example, etymology, knowledge about vocabulary, formation of words. Synonyms and antonyms, paronyms, homonyms, and pairs of words. And words liable to be confused. They are they are called bogglers or mind blowers. Also, we have semantics, means knowledge about meanings of words. It is called semantics. And there's phonology or phonology. It's about accent or pronunciation of words. Then syntax, how words are used in given sentence. What is the right place of the words to express or explain in writing or in spoken English? That is called syntax or syntax. Okay. Then we have grammar. Some people believe that there is no need of grammar in the English language. It is impossible. Grammar is just like a soul in body or head in body. It makes a language pull on according to rules and principles. And there cannot be any language without grammar. The same is very much true of the English language. And also prosody. It is also part of linguistics about words. One meaning of prosody is art of words or poetry writing. And linguistic is a part of the language. It is very important. Now, students at colleges and schools are taught English as a subject. As I said earlier, there is a great flaw, injustice with the language. It is a part of language, but not the complete language. They are asked to solve exercises. Complete assignments in schools, most school colleges, and English as a language is not very much taught, and that is very important to be followed. As a language, we can learn a lot from the other languages also because it's a comparative study of languages. Mainly, English language comes from the Latin language, and from Latin we have French. From French, we have the modern English. So, for learning English, we have to go back to other languages. And that is only possible when we learn how the English works, how it is mechanism and its system and fabric. Then our teachers of English work very hard, no hard. Maybe secondary teacher, high school teacher, college teacher, or university. They really work very hard. Those who know how to teach and why to teach, what is the responsibility, they are very much given to their work. They really work. They are committed teachers. They teach text, exercises, and grammar. But they are not given training in training centers or workshops of the languages. That is a great drawback of our language. In Sindhi, Urdu, Latin, French, German, many other languages. For training how to teach poetry, how to teach prose, how to teach novel, drama, kids, and so on. There are different methods, different systems of teaching all these things. When this comes to training place, things get very clear. Our teachers. Hardly attend training school workshops. They are busy their work and they go on with their for decades together without adding adding anything to knowledge or subject or expertise. And as a result, they stand still. They are there where their toil is back. No promotion, no development, no progress, no addition to their subject. And that is very that is really pity and very hard on this on the part of system. It is regretted to say that even science teachers, who are really good at science, teacher of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, they really work very hard, no doubt. But in most school colleges, physics, chemistry, and biology and botany are taught in Sindhi, Urdu, and other languages. That is pity. I heard teachers say, "Don't worry about English. Just go on with the language and system and substance of the matter. That will help you." That is not the real fact. The fact is that these terminologies should be taught to the students in English language, the medium of instruction is English. When they become teachers, instructors, trainers, how long will they go without English? They will be bound, or they are, they are to have English to their credit. So they should be taught in English. That is very good. And for years together, this system has gone on and on. And teachers go this, their subject with Sindhi and Urdu, and students lag behind in expression in English language. Most students study English textbooks 
for examinations only. They take English as a burden, heavy burden on their mind. They want to get rid of that subject anyhow. Maybe English, maybe Sindhi or Urdu. They go, don't go deep down into the subjects, into the context or mechanism or fabric of the language. And as a result, they miss the great fun, great interest, great knowledge that comes from that subject. Maybe poetry, maybe poem, maybe some story and so on. And in this way, language lags behind. <coughs> they cram stories, lessons, substances, poems and so on just to pass the time, get degree and certificate, and as a result, they remain quite behind in extensive reading, writing, and listening. Extensive reading is very important. The more you read, the more you come to, come to know about subject. Not only extensive, intensive reading, means deep down into the subject. You have to de- go down into the context. For example, there are 11 meanings of words in dictionary. Literal meaning, textual meaning, contextual meaning, scientific meaning, literary meaning, medical meaning, legal meaning, idiomatic meaning, metaphorical meaning, and phrasal meaning. So many kinds of meaning. How can you know the meaning without learning different meanings of the same word? It's very hard. In medical, word has different meaning. Science words have different meaning. So you have to be very much acquainted with the meanings of word. If not perfectly every word, you should at least know the meaning of the context where the word appears before you in the given subject. So extensive reading is very important. It is said the readers are leaders. The more you read, the more you come to know about the subject, no matter what about the language. But here we are speaking particularly about the English language. People, as I said earlier, they are good readers. Otherwise, we have electronic means devices, gadgets, and we go with them. And then electronic methods or mediums or means, they tail on our heart, on our heart, heart, eyes, and mind. We become heavy after having seen a screen for a long time. So it is better to go through the books, good books. They are your friends in loneliness, solitude. They are your friends in adversity. When you feel lonely, Sad that they take a book and go through it. The best book on the earth, whatever has been sent from above, is the Holy Quran. Go through it with meaning, illustration, example. It is Qasasul Quran. The stories of the Quran. You'll come to know how prophets were, what Allah sent to them from above, how they lived, and what they how they preached for the sake of Islam. Right from Adam al Islam to this day, Islam has been the only religion. In the deen, in the law, Islam, the best book ever read in the world, most of the time read all over the world, is none other save Quran. So read it and you'll know what, how the language works. No matter, Arabic is classical Arabic, it is Allah's language, but now books are available there. Illustration, interpretation, meaning, very simple language in Urdu, Sindhi, English. If you happen to read them in English, you will learn a lot. You'll get four or five benefits. Number one, you will be with Vazu, evolution. You will be reciting the Holy Quran, number two. Number three, you will be contacting with the Almighty Allah. What he says to you, that's the great message from above. If you have book in your hand and you read what Allah says to you. Number four, that will be good guidance for you. The time you spend there will be very useful, very precious, very meaningful, and very profitable time. And time that's saved, is part of life saved. And time that's wasted is a part of life wasted. So be a good reader. Begin with Quran Park, some other books, maybe stories. Maybe in your later time you can go through some other books to entertain yourself. That's your part of life. Don't all the time just be monotonous doing the same thing without any entertain or activity or without freshing yourself. You have are at liberty. You can do many things. But read only those books which are really readable worth reading books. Now, importance of grammar and use, all the parts of his speech, including articles, he comprised grammar. Go through those parts of his speech. There was a great scholar who began, began his career as a teacher, his career as a teacher, Anwar Afzal Mufti. He wrote books in English and Urdu, 
and gave simple instructions in Urdu. And which books were about 10 or 11. And tense, verb, structure, translation, voice, narration, paraphrasing, essay writing, stories, and so on. He did a great job. Now, there's a book available in the market. One book, English Grammar Composition, published by Elmi Kutub Khan Lahore. Writer is Anwar Afzal Mufti. Then we have several other books. Renan Martin by Chan Company, published in India. Then we have Barash of English, A.C. Imam, piracy book, but very good book. Exploring the World of English, Say Saad Ali Shah. Then we have Oxford books in grammar and composition. Go through them. They are very good books on the English language. They will tell you especially grammar and composition. Composition is a very important part. Your body is also composition. A thing made of any matter is a composition. What you speak is a composition. What you write is a composition. Compos it is your skill that is reflected in a piece of paper. So you enjoy writing when you real go on writing with for some time. Maybe a free writer. Write anything that comes to your mind, express it, except abusing or bad language. You'll come to know that you are able to write. Don't worry, there are mistakes. We all make mistakes. And there's always room for correction, if not perfection. Give that same thing to some teacher. He will make necessary correction, give back to you his remarks. And there are teachers who will help you free of any cost. They are born to serve the nation. And when you do this thing, you will be able to, I will be a good writer. There were some students, I don't find, find the faces here. They came here about four or five years back. They met me day before yesterday outside in the mosque. They came when they were in class eight, nine. Now they are BA, BSc part one. So they go on, continue. Work that you do everything that is profitable, that is rewarding. And you will get that reward sooner or later. Don't worry about that. Now, we have unfortunately old traditional methods in colleges and universities. I also belong to that period. I am 78 now. Still, there are people like me who adopt old traditional methods. Now there are classroom system, interaction between the teacher and the students, class discussion, group discussion, and there are so many methods of teaching now. We have new methods of teaching, you see, locked electronics, gadgets, and these other things which help a lot in teaching the students. Now gone are the days. We were complete simply only limited or can or restricted to the classroom. Now we are not confined classroom. We are out of classroom, in the classroom, even in open places we can learn a lot the language. If you have a quite good view of nature, it will give you a good glimpse of how nature works, how it looks like. You will be a good poet of nature, if not worse was or John Keats or Shelley and so on. Also, we have lack of research and hard work. Hard work, we don't work hard. Research is absolutely or at least somewhat that is gone forever. So we should have aptitude for research and also hard work. So as you work hard, definitely you will learn a lot. I hope that with this brief lecture, you will also have some knowledge about how language works, why it is back these days, where we are deficient, where do we lack the language. The main thing we lack in the language is vocabulary. We are badly lacking vocabulary. We don't have many synonyms, antonyms to our credit. So when we learn them from dictionary, listen to good speakers, read thoroughly, and reference to dictionary again and again, definitely we'll come to know about the mechanism, fabric, and formation, and working of the language. That's all.